Hello and welcome back to Half Pick's Guide to Industrial Craft. I am Half Pick, and today we're going to be covering advanced machinery of industrial craft and a little treat called the jetpack. So let's get right into it. If you remember from our nuclear episode, we crafted an item called advanced alloy. Uh, if you don't remember or haven't watched that video, please go back and do so for the recipe for that, because I will not be covering it here. So after you take that out of the compressor, you have some fresh, adva fresh advanced alloy. If you mix that with some glass and three pieces of alloy like so, you will get reinforced glass. And along with reinforced glass, you also have reinforced stone, which is just one piece of alloy surrounded by smooth stone and take reinforced stone and put it in a door pattern and you get a reinforced blast door and you end up with something a little bit like this this stuff will hold up to TNT, creepers, uh, nuclear explosions at a certain distance uh, but it can be broken, it's not blast blast proof like obsidian so just be careful so you're gonna run in here and that's what it looks like through the windows it's a real neat almost militaristic texture to it so, as we have machines, as in the block, uh, that are the basis for our normal machines, advanced machinery requires da -da -da -da, advanced machine blocks. And they come in one flavor and one flavor alone that requires four advanced alloy, one lapis block in the center, and a new item called carbon plate, four, four of those to be precise. And to make carbon plate, first of all, you need to macerate some coal dust, or macerate some coal into coal dust. Head over to your workbench, drop three, three in a line to make carbon fibers, and we're going to need three carbon fibers, and we're going to drop those in a horizontal line, and we finally come upon a combined carbon fiber. Now with that, you whip them into a compressor, which I don't have out here in my testing area, and after you compress it, it turns into a carbon plate. So, coal, hope you've been saving it and using charcoal to burn instead. And that gives us a, an excuse me, advanced machine block, which would be this piece right here. So what can we do with that? Well, we got a couple things we can craft with that. Uh, first of all, being the impressively destructive Tesla coil. And Tesla coils require advanced circuits, an advanced machine, high voltage transformer, and four pieces of cable. Tesla coils, uh, if you haven't seen them in action, you will so by the end of the video. I'll go over that shortly. What else? Uh, MFEs. MFEs only hold 60,000 EU, and if you notice, that tends to fill up rather quickly. Well, what we have here are some energy crystals, uncharged, and an advanced machine, and that gives us a brand spanking new machine that can hold up to, that's right, 3 million electrical units at one time. And we'll just queue one of those up here. Actually, I'll just snag all this off the shelf. Yeah. An MFS unit, that's right. Now, like its little brother, uh, it takes in current from all four sides, outputs on the top and the bottom, and you can adjust it with the EC manipulator. So, Shazam, 3 million. Good luck filling that. Let's come back over here. What else would we have over here, have pick? Well, this would be a terraformer recipe. Terraformer? Yes, we can now change the landscape around this at will. With a little bit of power and a terraformer at your disposal, you too can have a shining desert, hot equatorial jungle, or a landscape of nothing but stone. So this is an advanced machine, two lapis blocks, two advanced circuits, a regular machine, and three pieces of cable. Just let me check something real quick. 
I want to make sure I have that. Yep, that is correct. <laughs> I'm like, my regular machine, that doesn't look like it fits it. Yes, yes, it is right. So we're going to snag that, and that's going to be the first thing I'm going to show you how to hook up here. And these do not work alone. They require a secondary item, which is back on the shelf there, and I'll bring it back over as soon as I craft this. And you'll see the terraformers look like lapis blocks, unfortunately. They, that, I'm a little sad about this texture, because they, they tend to kind of get lost in the shuffle in my, inside my uh, chests. So here's the terraformer interface. You can either power them via generators, high voltage that's been toned down, etc., etc., or chuck en charged energy crystals in the bottom. But they all require this piece right here to work in the first place. So what is this piece called? Well, again, I forget the <laughs> I forget the name. Let's look it up here. They're terraformer blueprints. That's right, terraformer blueprints. And these little memory sticks. This is just the first step. So once again, we'll jump back over here to our crafting table. Two in the corner, stone in the middle, some tin. Some extra wiring and advanced circuit gives us an empty terraformer blueprint. Now, how you program a blueprint determines what exactly you're going to get out of your terraformer. And if you just give me one second here. Now, here we have our regular empty transformer blueprint. Stick that on a terraformer, not going to do anything. So you have to choose between one of these five in order for it to perform any useful function. So, starting on here in the end, we have the recipe for the flatificator. Flatificator terraformers are dangerous to buildings uh, in that they will destroy the terrain around them. Uh, any block that is above them, aside from stone, will be removed eventually, and it fills in empty space below it with dirt. Now, to what extent below it it will fill in, I'm not quite sure. Never really play with it all that much. But if you want a nice little work area off off in the distance, set one of these, do the whole Ron Poe Peel thing, set it and forget it, come back in a couple days. Uh, this one will... I think it's called the compressor. Uh, it will take dirt and gravel and compress those into cobblestone, and we'll take sand and compress that into sandstone, and given enough time it'll compress both of those into solid stone. So, good way of getting getting some sandstone or some extra cobblestone without trying. The winterizer, I, I don't believe that's the correct name, but it does exactly what it looks like it would do. Uh, it turns it into a winter wonderland. It covers everything in snow, and once a uh, goodly degree of everything has been covered, it will begin piling up snow blocks for you to gather. The desertification, some sand, some pair of cactus, and again an empty TFBP in the center. This will turn everything into desert. Dirt will turn to sand, trees will disappear, and it will plant cactus. And it also takes care of water as well. Strangely enough, it doesn't differentiate between the open oceans slash large lakes and small ponds. So if you go out, you'll see a bunch of little tidal pools everywhere. Here is the one that produces forests and grasslands. Uh, this works uh, it will plant trees, it will plant flowers, and I'm not sure if it does uh, oh, what, what's that? Uh, pumpkins or mushrooms of either sort. And it just occurred to me that there's one more that goes along with that one. This is called the Irrigation Tra Terraformer Plan. But full buckets of water around that. And that will make plants, including trees, especially trees, and wheat grow faster, as if they were planted on um, wet soil. So very helpful. Uh, if you got a place that you're trying to switch over from a desert, etc., go ahead and slot that down, and things will go a lot quicker. So let's grab one of these. 
Let's get one that it's noticeable. We'll take the flat flatificator. And now we have one set up. You take your flatificator, or whichever one that you pick, put it in the top slot of the terraformer, and then wire it to an MFE with some generators, and voila, terraforming begins. See, right there, there's the first block. It's going to fill up everything. Oh, so working fast. There's some dirt over there. Some of the sand disappearing. Oh, there's more. Oh, whoa. See, popping up here. It's real surprising how quickly this gets to work. But you get the idea. Now, each of these takes a different amount of energy to run. You can find out what exactly they take to work continuously at the bottom of the original post for industrial craft. Uh, the flatificator happens to take 40, hence the eight generators here chugging away, filling up this uh, MFS unit. And just like the miners, I set it to 40 so nothing's going to waste. So about that jetpack. How about that jetpack? Get yourself some refined iron, some glowstone, some tin, an electric circuit, and make sure you have plenty of coal fuel on hand so that you can power this thing. So it's electric circuit, tin, glowstone, huzzah. And to fuel this, you're going to need fuel on either side, and voila, you have your jetpack. Take that, put it on your action bar, right click it to activate it, take it off, put it on your chest piece, and now you can go flying. Huzzah! Look at me go! Off we go, and we lose thrust the further we go up, so it's just good for short jumps, but still fun nonetheless. Mind the fall damage. And those are some of the nice little gadgets you can make. So let's move on to the Tesla coil, and I'll set up an example of that. And here we have a Tesla coil hooked up to a high voltage line. Yes, folks, you can hook these bad boys up to a high voltage line, just don't touch the high voltage like I just did. <clears throat> and the reason being is that these things chew up massive quantities of power. Before they can attack anything, they require a total of 5,000 electrical units to be fed into them, after which point they are considered charged, and they are ready to fire. So, unfortunately I don't have any pigs around here, and the last time I shocked myself in a test video with one of these things, I couldn't reload my map. So, I'm just going to show you how to hook them up. They require, in order to kill anything, they require to be turned on. So you hook them up with redstone, and flip the switch. And now that thing is armed. Anywhere within a four block radius of that block is going to get completely and utterly annihilated. Now. If you're wearing armor, it will decrease the amount of damage you take. However, uh, if you have it hooked up as I do, and this high voltage line is charging that puppy up real quick, and this stays on for permanently like I have it switched, chances are you're going to get killed. They ignore line of sight. Not a bad thing for an instant kill against mobs. You could set these up against creepers and some such at your front door, and they just walk into it and get zapped. Just make sure you don't get zapped yourself. Well, there you have it. And here's a preview of what's coming up in the next video. This is the allocator mod. These uh, nifty little blocks right here. And this is what's going to allow us to make a fully automated factory. And I'm going to take some time, I'm going to set one up, I'm going to also do uh, Fenor's uh, factory craft mod that goes along with this. They're two separate mods, but he bundled them together, together for us. And that's what was in my previous video with the trees being taken down all by themselves. So I'll have a factory, nice factory set up here. We'll show you those. We'll go over the last couple little tidbits here, including the nano suit, which is going to make my nose bleed because I can never remember the crafting recipe for it. And uh, past that, everyone have fun out there, and as always, mine safely.